Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Blueprint with Tim and TC. We are episode 105 today and uh, excited to continue our conversation and provide insights and knowledge necessary to build your competence and confidence in self-managing your property. TC, how's it going? We are back and better than ever. We're trying. We're trying at least. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. Um, I've had a, a couple buddies who have been nice enough to uh, listen to our show for, uh, for support, for uh, moral support. And I and, uh, was talking to one yesterday who uh, said, Tim, love the show. Uh, I'm going to do it. I said, cool. What are you going to do? Start a podcast? I don't know what you're talking about right now. And he said, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to get into, I'm going to buy a vacation rental. I was like, awesome. And then he starts talking to me about, oh, you know, I saw, I saw a couple on, on Zillow. I, I'm really into, I think, I think it was like, oh, cool. Awesome. How about let's, let's take a time out here. And, and I said, well, who's your CPA? Wait, what? That was the response I got. Okay. Well, who, who's your, who, who's doing this? Who's doing that for you? And, and of course he's my buddy. So I'm giving him a hard time. I, I, I enjoy making him squirm a little bit, but you know, it, it is that piece that reminded me, we need, we need to talk about this TC. We need to have sort of that professional services conversation, because as I've said now, countless times, you're managing a business, you, you are buying into, you're investing into a business and those who are successful in this space, man, they, they look at it like that in every decision they make. And I think when we talk about professional services, you and I have been doing this long enough. It, it is sort of second nature to us that you're going to need you know, these types of services set up. But for so many people getting into short-term uh, vacation rental investing, I think we owe it to them to really give them uh, a, a broad stroke view of those professional services in support of getting set up to run your business successfully. No, I think that's right. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about expanding into beachfront property. We've uh, been going to North Carolina for a long time. And there was a listing I was looking at recently, and the headline was $250,000 of annual income. Well, it's not <sighs> income the way we like to think of income. What that was, no. gross rental. So, okay, maybe so. Maybe $250,000 of gross rental is realistic. But what are all the expenses? And right. what's the mortgage going to be? And, you know, when you talk about building a professional services team, you know, real estate's one of them as well. You've got to work with someone who is going to work with you as a business purchase. Not as right. a beachfront property homeowner. It's, it's a business purchase and, and everything matters. So great topic for today. And I think, uh, you know, while we run the risk of being all over the board on this one, because there's lots to talk about, I think the listeners will get a lot of value. And I think it's it's also important that here's our disclaimer of every service we're uh, recommending that you talk to, we are not experts in these services. And so our goal here is we want to provide a baseline understanding of, of why we chose and prioritize these groups in establishing uh, any business we establish. But also our goal is uh, we want to have guests on the show that are experts that do do this uh, for a living and that, you know, more times than not, we've selected uh, similar to when we talk about uh, vendor selection, you know, we, you have to do your due diligence and you have to build strong relationships uh, with these partners because they are experts in their field and they can uh, provide a lot of great guidance to you guidance that we don't necessarily have the experience to provide, but we're going to get those guests on the show uh, to be able to provide that to you. That's right. And, uh, you know, the one thing that we learned during the journey is that, uh, you know, we'll talk about CPAs, attorneys, they're not all created equal. You know, we learned the lesson the hard way that there are individuals in their profession that specialize in real estate and to some degree, even in short-term rentals. So right. doing, your, doing our homework and finding the right support team of professional services um, took a little time to really understand what we were looking for, but now I think we've got a lot to share with our uh, with our fans. So when we when we take a step back when we were first getting into this, um, walk me through 
the the first the first professional service you you kind of strategically looked at and said okay here's the first one because this one is going to lead to all of the rest of the services how did how did you frame that that selection and and what service did you kick off with yeah so i kicked off with a cpa and i'll tell you why okay. um i wasn't sure do i start with an attorney do i start with a cpa and i landed on the cpa but during my very first conversation with the CPA, one of the first questions was, what's your entity structure going to be? So note mm -hmm. to self, call the attorney as soon as I hang up the phone with my CPA. Right. So the first one, I, I was looking for a CPA, and I was very fortunate to find a CPA that had bookkeeping services and that specializes in real estate. Took me a while to find them, but I found them, and hopefully we'll have... Uh, someone from this firm on the podcast in the future. And what the CPA helped me to do was to think about the proper accounting for a short-term rental. And again, caveat, as listeners, don't be overwhelmed with this. This is what your professional services are going to support you with. We're just sharing with you the whys and wherefores. Right. Because you're going to be overwhelmed by this when you're just thinking about it. So don't be right. That's, that's, that's right. <laughs> anytime you hear CPA, it's just that for a lot of our, uh, for a lot of people out there, just in general, there, there's a level of stress that ramps up and, and truly you shouldn't be because it should be more about finding the right expert to guide you through it and, and limit or eliminate your stress in this area. Well, and they were so helpful because the first hour I spent on the phone with them, they just walked me through a number of questions and how to think about the answers. So I'll share a few. And then as we um, have this, hopefully this firm on the podcast in the future, we'll dive deep. But the first question was, are you going to self-manage? And I said, you know what? I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm yeah. kind of going back and forth. And they stopped me and said, if you can self-manage, even though you're 1,500 miles away, there could be tremendous tax benefits to you. And I said, oh, now I'm interested. Right. Ding, ding, now ding. I'm yep. <laughs> curious, so tell me more. <laughs> and they said, you know, it's not hard. You just got to materially participate, which just simply means you got to self-manage and you've got to keep a time log. So you know, Tim, since the very beginning, we've been keeping a very detailed time log Correct. of the time we spend working on the home and, you know, what we do. And that time log that we keep is instrumental when it comes time to file your taxes. It shows that you materially participate and it opens up some uh, potentially some nice tax benefits. So the CPA did a great job of educating me on the benefits, the tax benefits of self-managing and what that means. So we're not going to go into the detail on this podcast, but just I hope it uh, piques everyone's curiosity and interest that if you self-manage and if you're willing to just keep a time log, all pretty straightforward, there could be some really nice tax advantages available to you. But how do you know? You hire a good CPA. They do not have to cost you a ton of money, but there are going to be an expense that you got to build into your model. But a good CPA is going to do your bookkeeping, they're going to give you a monthly financial report, and they will make sure that you are set up for success when it comes time for filing your taxes. What do we want our listeners to hear? Key thing, a good CPA who is well-versed in real estate and in short-term rentals will share with you the potential tax benefits associated of self-managing. So that's ultimately what caused me to decide to self-manage is the opportunity and the tax benefits were too good to pass up on. And for first time business owners, yes, there's great, there's great potential for tax benefit, but you're running a business. And when you run a business, there are tax implications that you have to be mindful of. And this is again, where that CPA really comes in and helps guide you of you have a responsibility in running your business to pay taxes. And a, a great CPA is going to guide you through those tax savings as well. But it's important when that real estate professional is selling you on the fact you're going to make $250,000 that first year, uh, that's $250 of revenue that's going to have some level of tax 
uh, responsibility toward the government. And there's certain percentages of that that you'll be able to have uh, savings based on how your CPA guides you to do it. So I find myself innately going, oh, just always go lawyer first. <laughs> have that legal conversation first. But this, in this instance, I, I know you really swayed me on let's have a conversation with a CPA. The legal, the legal side of it will be shortly thereafter, but let's really figure out and have a strong conversation around the, the tax impact on how we want to structure it and if we want to self-manage it or if we want to hire a property manager because there are different implications. Well, that's right. And after talking to the CPA and, and, and really that conversation helped me think through, yep, I'm going to self-manage. Now, when I reached out to the attorney, I was able to have a very educated conversation. We have a great attorney, by the way, and hopefully she'll be on the podcast in the future. Shout out to Cassandra. So I was able to say, hey, Cassandra, we are going to self-manage. Here's why we're going to self-manage. Here's our objectives. Uh, we also want to make sure that we protect ourselves because we are in the hospitality business and we are going to be hosting guests. We want to make sure that we protect ourselves and we want to protect our assets in our life so that they're not exposed if there was an issue. Help me think through how do we set up the entity? And this is where this professional service can really guide you. They can walk you through the pros and cons of every type of entity out there and then make a recommendation whether or not, number one, you need an entity. And if you do, what's the best way to think about the entity structure? And here's the real win. It's not expensive. Setting up an LLC, setting up an entity, it's not expensive, but it does require someone who knows how to do it and how to do it well. So it's not going to cost you a lot of money. But again, this is another one of those topics where doing it the right way is important and it's going to set you up for long-term success. And TC, just, just going back, I mean, both CPA and legal, there's a fair amount of local knowledge that they're going to have to have in both of these respects, right? Because it's, yes, there's, there's the federal piece of it, but what we're talking about too, is there's some, you know, local requirements. You know, I, I think of tourist heavy locations, uh, have a few more maybe tax requirements or legal requirements for getting your business licensed, especially if you're going to be in a in a lodging type business. Uh, you really want to focus on someone with that local knowledge of your specific area, right? Well, that's right. And this goes back to a prior podcast also is we didn't know where to start. You know, where do you start your search for an attorney? So we leveraged our relationship with our CPA and said, hey, you know the business we're in now. Can you point us in a direction or two? And sure enough, they did. And, uh, you know, that led to several conversations, but it was that it was that reference, that starting point that the CPA provided that led us down the right path and ultimately to an attorney that is well-versed in local law, well-versed in short-term rentals, and was really able to support us, not with just things like the entity structure, but, you know, we use a rental agreement and I wanted an attorney to review the rental agreement to make sure that everything in there was following state law. And right. it was a half an hour of her time, but we now have a great rental agreement that we know is supported by and complies with local law. On the legal side, on the CPA side, and specifically on the CPA side, we don't necessarily require it, right? Because you and I are constantly looking at financial statements. We're constantly reviewing budgets and uh, business model pro formas. But a CPA, if, if you don't feel confident in that, because I, I know when we talked about the decision matrix uh, around if, if this is even the right space for you to be investing in, our conversation was, do you enjoy finances? You don't have to necessarily be an expert in them, but do you enjoy the thought of having to manage those finances? And I think that's where a CPA could potentially help you get set up with your first pro forma or your first business model or budget. Yeah, and what the CPA was really helpful with, and, and they're helpful on many fronts, but in the very beginning, they helped me think very, very clearly about expenses that are incurred by the business, but also um, 
capital expenditures. So there, there are some things that you're going to spend money on, large pieces of furniture that um, you can't expense to the business, but you have to depreciate it. And short-term rental is a business. So it's got a depreciation schedule that's more like a business. While I could do all of that, it's an area that I didn't want to take any gambles on because right. I don't I don't know my accounting well enough. But at the end of every month, when I get my financial statement from my CPA, I can read that financial statement. I can see how every expense and capital expenditure was treated. And I can see where my uh, opportunities are within my financial statement to drive more revenue to the bottom line. So, you know, it, it does help a lot to have some business acumen, but your CPA is going to support you with a lot of things that require some degree of technical esp- expertise that I don't have. Exactly. And, and they can provide you with a general perspective as you get ready to engage with that next uh, level of professional services. And, and where I think we go next is the real estate and the, the lending or the finance side for buying your business and taking the time with your CPA and, and working through you know, potential model forecasts uh, of what you envision for the business gives you a good kind of general target to engage with a, a real estate professional and a, and a lending institution or a lender uh, to have a more informed conversation. Because everyone, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people looking to get into this space are going to, just like anytime you search for a home, you're going to fall in love with a $2.1 million custom home with the uh, the fancy Star Wars Millennium Falcon bedroom and the ski chalet in, in Beaver Creek, you know, and, and all of these great rentals that are currently for sale. But you need to understand what your model or the general direction of your model is so that when you engage with a, a real estate professional and a, a lending institution for your business, uh, you can have a more informed conversation when it's presented to you. Oh, yeah. Vacation rentals, great idea. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars in revenue first year. You're going to be printing cash. Uh, okay, don't go with that professional. Find a different one, right? <laughs> uh, and I think that really gets back to the importance of selecting the right real estate professional and a trusted uh, lender in order to be able to navigate this next phase of your professional business correctly. Yeah. So if we start with the real estate professional, so, you know, real life example, really looking for that home up on uh, the beaches of North Carolina. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the headline was the $250,000 of annual income. Well, reaching out to the real estate professional up there, um, started with the conversation of, can you show me a spreadsheet with the rental income from the past two or three years? I want to see that. No, we don't have it. So that told me right away, that was the wrong real estate professional. I was looking for a real estate professional who could provide me with the annual rental income by month, fact-based information that is easily retrievable. And that real estate agent wasn't. So first I was looking for that. Secondly, I was looking for local knowledge. So beachfront properties can cost more to maintain because they take a lot more wear and tear from the elements. When they're exposed to that ocean air, anything outside the home, HVAC equipment or just roofs and you know siding can take a lot more wear and tear. So I needed someone to share with me what does the annual upkeep and what do the uh, utility bills look like for this area. I needed to have the basics of, I know what the mortgage is going to be. I can do that math. I know what my out-of-pocket down payment is going to be. I can do that math. But to build my initial pro forma, I had to get an idea of what annual upkeep was going to be. Wasn't familiar with that. And I needed to know what the utilities run month by month. All of this information should be readily available and something a real estate professional can provide. So I finally found that real estate professional that could provide me with the spreadsheets to show annual revenue by month and to give me a really good idea of the utility costs 
and the maintenance costs. So now when I sat down and I did the math, yeah, it was about $245,000 of annual top line revenue. Right. But after expenses, this is a real number, after expenses, I was going to put in my bank account less than $10,000 a year self-managing. Right. And that was the piece that I didn't, I don't take that as bad news. It just wasn't the right investment. But right. here's the key. I found that real estate professional that would provide me with the data. So then I went back to this individual and said, okay, it's not going to be this one, mm-hmm. but let's look for that property that's going to generate this revenue and operates at this level of expense. If you can put together three or four homes in that category, let's start looking, let's start talking. They're working on that right now. So I gave them the parameters to now go and do the work. They know I want to see the spreadsheets of the month by month revenue. And when they submit that to me, I also want an idea of a home that size, what it's going to cost to operate. So they're willing to do that. I'm going to get that with every house I look at now. And they're willing to do that level of work to get my business. That's what I was looking for. And those those specialists do exist. And I think that's what it is. I, they, they need to be committed. They need to have a history of, of not just selling short-term vacation rentals, but they need to have that history of understanding and properly conveying the information that you need. And once they earn that trust, I mean, that's there's so much value as a business owner or a potential business owner in finding that real estate professional that has your uh, trust and they anticipate your questions and provide that information to you. So when a property comes up, and, and we see this all the time on our other businesses, the great opportunities aren't on the market for long. So the faster you can move with your CPA and your legal team and your your real estate professional and, and even your lender, uh, the faster and better opportunities you're going to have to be competitive on a property that has a very promising financial model inherent in it. And it's not just based on top line sales or revenue. Yeah. And if, and if you're happy, if you talk to that uh, real estate agent that only wants to give you the headline, Hey, this thing's going to generate a hundred thousand dollars a year. If that's all they can give you, doesn't mean they're a bad agent. It just means they're probably a residential agent. They're used to selling homes, residents to individuals. What we are looking for as owners of a business, owners of a short-term rental property, is we're looking someone who can provide us with the information we need to make a good business decision and a decision that will generate good revenue, good bottom line income for us. So it doesn't mean they're good or bad. It just means you're looking for one who specializes in what you are looking for. And that is the data that you require to make a good decision on whether to or not to purchase. So this, you know, this $2.5 million beach home that we passed on, we're not disappointed. Uh, we're actually elated that we got the information that we needed to make a good business decision. And now we know where to look and what to look for. Now we're looking for that four bedroom, four bath. We know what revenue that will most likely generate. So it really allows you as a business owner to zero in on the real estate that is going to allow you to generate the bottom line dollars that you are looking for. And, and okay, maybe they're not all bad agents, but I I think you and I also have had (laughs) enough conversations with, uh, individuals who have invested, they've put their life savings into a short-term vacation rental because they were sold a bill of goods and they didn't ask the right questions, but, uh, they, you know, maybe, maybe it wasn't a bad, maybe it was a bad agent who saw an opportunity and took advantage of it with an individual who had money available. They had money for the down payment. They were going to get into it. They seem to be enamored with, oh, well, I can, I can live on this income. That's fantastic. And, and you and I, uh, end up having conversations to with individuals and at some point, you know, these individuals in tears because they don't know what to do because they thought this was going to be just a easy income for them. And, and that's, you know, one of the many variables that triggered us into sharing what we're sharing here on the podcast is we want to make sure that we provide the real insight based on property owners we talk to and then our experience as property owners around 
the importance of each of these professional services and the importance to vet these services to find the right fit for you. If you don't have a good feeling, there is no requirement that you work with any specific service, only that you find the right service and a service and a group and a company that you trust to provide that service to you. Yeah. And and here's the reality. And I think as owners, as business owners, uh, the reality that we all have to face is that if we purchased a property for short-term vacation rental, based on the word of a real estate agent, there's only one person to blame. Exactly. And that's us. That is absolutely yep. us. It's no different than that next door neighbor who said, you know what? I think you should invest $500,000 in this stock. We heard it's a good one. Right. Who's going to do that? Yeah. It's no different here. It's up to us, the business owner. We've got to do our homework. We've got to know the right questions to ask. And as our listeners, we want you to be in a position to not fall victim to the lies, the myths, and the deceptions out there. Instead, we want you to tune in for the three T's from us, the truth, the transparency, and the trust. It's what we're here for. We're going to break through the clutter for you. We're going to get rid of the myths and provide you with the information that you need to run a good business. How about that? The three T's, Tim, just made that up. Hold, hold on. I'm writing it down. There we go. Done. Truth, transparency, trust. So, we are, we're CPA, bookkeeper, we've talked legal, the legal side of it, the real estate professional, the importance of uh, doing your due diligence and selecting the right fit for you in all three of those, because there's, there's truly great professional service providers in each of these categories, and there's probably far more really great ones than there are horrible ones, but you do need to spend that time finding the right fit for you. Uh, then we've got a lender, you know, and, and how a lender can really help guide you through the financing of this in the right way. Because if, if you've, uh, read any headlines lately, interest rates aren't, uh, aren't what they were, uh, back during the pandemic days. So understanding the right financial entry point is, uh, is so essential because that, that can put you behind the eight ball before you even take your first occupant into your space, if you really think about it. Yeah. And a good lender will help you really determine wh where's the best way and what's the best way to access capital for your investment. Now, we're not here to tell you that there's a no money down opportunity. If there is, right. please call us and tell us yeah. about it. But there's, please, please, there's please. different ways to think about financing a business, a short-term rental property. A good lender will help you with that. And I'll also tell you that after talking to the CPA and attorney, we decided to set up an entity for our vacation rental properties. And one of the conversations I had with the lender on the front end was, hey, just be aware, once we close on the property, we plan to quit claim deed it over into the LLC. Do you have any issue with that? And even though most mortgage clauses allow them to call the loan if you transfer ownership, Right. By being transparent, by being upfront, um, you really set yourself up for the right relationship with your lender. Uh, our lenders said, no, no worries at all. Happens all the time. Uh, we never exercise that privilege. So uh, by all means, we get it. But, but awareness, transparency, honesty on the front end goes a long way in identifying the right lender. And I, I'm very excited for... Uh for getting you know, each of these professional service providers on the show uh, to really do more of a deep dive. You know, we're, we're definitely just a broad, broad stroke approach today in, in running through these. But, you know, I think the, the last one I have down and, and one that I think is, is right positioned in this sequence of CPA bookkeeper, legal real estate lending, uh, is is insurance. And, you know, I think by the time you get through the first four professional services and building up those relationships, I think you're well positioned uh, to have an informed conversation about insurance on your property. What are your thoughts on that one? No, that's right. And, uh, you know, I didn't know really where to start w with insurance. So what did I do? I reached out to uh, the insurance company that insures our uh, primary property. Okay. And they don't they don't insure short term rentals, but 
they allowed me to have a, a great conversation and shared a lot of information with me. And uh, as I went down the path of looking for an insurance company, I talked to a lot of owners of short-term rental properties that uh, they were only paying three or $400 a year for their premium. Yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, how, how does that work? I know what I'm paying for my personal <laughs> property. And the bottom line is um, you can get away with spending very little, but you get what you pay for. Exactly. So when I found, uh, I, I narrowed it down to two or three insurance companies. And then I went down the path of, okay, this is what I want. I want my deductibles at this level. I want to have insurance to where if the house gets damaged, hurricane, act of God, then I've got rental protection insurance, meaning if I was getting $5,000 a month of income and I could no longer rent the home, I wanted to have insurance that allowed that income to continue to come in so I could pay my bills. So I went through the laundry list of what I wanted, and then I was able to get prices from these three firms that I was working with, and I chose the most competitive price. I didn't choose the cheapest one. I chose right in the middle, and I have the level of protection that I believe I need to protect the investment, but also to protect the income if there was something that happened that prevented me from renting the home for a period of time. So I'm not paying 500 bucks for an insurance policy premium. I pay more than that, and I factor it into my financial model, but being educated on the industry allowed me to have the right conversation with the insurance company and to ultimately find and identify the company I wanted to work with. And then just like just like any insurance, I mean this is a, this is this is business insurance it's but it's a combination of business and property insurance is really what it's about, right? That's exactly right. And if you're in a floodplain, you've got to make sure you have flood insurance so you you want to protect the asset. Mm -hmm. and you want to protect the income. And there's a way to do both with a good insurance policy. Now, I will tell you that when I was exploring opportunities, I could have paid as much as $6,000 a year for an insurance policy. Um, there are companies out there that provide you an unbelievable level of coverage, but $6,000 in a premium was a lot more than my financial model could manage. So I elected to take on a little bit more risk and pay a more reasonable policy. But I have eyes all open as to what is and what isn't covered. When the hurricane was coming in, I knew exactly where my exposure is or was at the time based on the policy I had. There was going to be no surprises because when that hurricane is predicted, in most cases, you are not able to call your insurance company and increase your coverage. They will right. not do it. So you've got to be covered on the front end. Again, that is highly specific to location where if you're closer to the coast, we're, we're inland, uh, where, where we are. So, you know, we have a, a relative, uh, protection in, in land that will, you know, weaken a storm before it gets to us. But if you're right on the coast, if you are in, uh, you know, I think in the, uh, the Western half of the United States, which, you know, struggle with some pretty severe forest fires and, and just risk, from, you know, if you get further west earthquakes and I mean, there, there's a multitude of factors here that insurance really has to be specific to your location and the appropriate coverage. Now, TC, with insurance, to what level do you have to cover or do you have to carry coverage or do you feel comfortable carrying coverage for the occupants within the home? Is there anything that you need to think about or our listener uh, listeners, hopefully, uh, need to think about uh, on insurance and coverage for the occupant within their space. Yeah. So my learning here, and again, best practice based on mistakes made in the past. Yep. Uh, when I was talking to the insurance agent, uh, I, I shared with him in great detail. Again, this is all about uh, truth, transparency, and trust. Again, trust. Yep. Made that up. T -T -T. Yep, trust. TTT -T -T so, by TNT. Exactly. Nope, too much. <laughs> so, so the, um, you know, I shared with them, Hey, we've got a pool, you know, we're going to occupy as many uh, as 14 people. Yep. That's what our rental agreement allows for. So there could be 14 people in the home. We do have a pool. We do have a, a fence up around that pool, but it's not infallible. 
So I shared all the details with them as far as what was in the home. Uh, I shared with them that it's a two story. Um, I shared with them that there are two landing. So I went through all the potential risk issues that I could think of. Right. And then they came back and said, okay, based on all this information, we think this is the coverage you should carry. Here's how much, and here's why. Decision was mine, but I provided them with the information on the front end. They came back with a recommendation, the premium associated with those recommendations, and then I could ultimately make the best decision. And I and I think that's just a great reminder too that you know when in doubt, ask the question. We're we're recommending professional services and and a general order you want to follow uh, as you get ready to enter into this adventure. Uh, but as the questions arise, I mean th- these service providers are experts in their field for a reason. Ask these types of questions, and uh, you're not. No one's expecting you to know all the answers. I certainly don't know. I certainly know very little. I know what I don't know, and it's a lot in these areas that we're listing out, which is why we're recommending building trust and a strong line of communication with these individuals. And if you have a question that you're thinking to yourself, man, Tim, that's a that's a dumb question. I should know the answer to that. Nope. Ask the question. Ask the question. Get the answer from the experts so that you can make an informed decision for the, the essentially the livelihood of your business, Right. That's right. And, you know, Tim, there's probably two other things we should mention to our uh, our listeners before we bring this episode to a close. They're small details, but again, it's under the um, kind of the heading of we're running a business. Every state's going to have the requirements on licensing. You know, I've got to have right. a license because I operate a, a hospitality business and I've got to display that license in a prominent location in the home. So not a big expense, but again, uh, you got to be familiar with what your state guidelines are. And then secondly, you know, I get uh, I get revenues every month from either direct rentals or VRBO or Verbo or Airbnb, and uh, I've got to make sure I pay taxes monthly. And in Florida, I've got to pay my state tax and I've got to pay my tourist tax on direct rentals. And that's nothing more than logging into your state agency, and it takes about five minutes every month. But again, calling that state agency on the front end, getting the account set up can make it very, very easy. But I will tell you on the second day of every month, I log in, takes me about five minutes. I report my rental income and then I pay my appropriate taxes. I stay current on that and my CPA makes sure uh, makes sure that I stay current on that. And if you don't pay your taxes, then there's uh, you know, ramifications for that. And you and you do that. Your CPA doesn't do that for you, right? Correct. Correct. That's that's something that takes five minutes of your time, and yeah. you don't need to pay someone else to do that. I'm comfortable doing myself. Taxes, no flipping way. I'm not doing my right. tax returns. Yeah. Yikes. And, and that that goes back to you know when you're self managing, it's really about prioritizing. You know what you're what you're going to spend your time doing. You you are you're building systems. You're automating where you can, and you're working with professionals, and that gives you a huge advantage as as a self managing business owner that you can actually directly connect to your bottom line, what goes into your checking account at the end of every month uh, or at the end of every year. That's where it really gets into know when to leverage your resources, know when to delegate to your resources and then know when to ask the, the questions to your resources and do it yourself. Uh, it's another example of you've got to build your financial model correctly. You've got expenses associated with your business. You're not buying a home and just paying for utilities. You're running a business and we all have expenses associated with those businesses. Accounting, legal, taxes, these are just some of them. Just make sure you build them into your model and uh, if, if you build your pro forma correctly, then you'll generate a nice revenue, bottom line revenue, assuming you're self-managing. And this is, I mean, this professional service list, it's a general list. I mean, it really, it really can expand uh, based on what your goals and, and what you're seeking to accomplish with your property. I know, you know, just as an example, we added a, a, an amazing designer to this list early on, uh, right, kind of between the 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 legal, the real estate, and sort of that that phase, so we could start 
differentiating what we were providing to guests from others. But again, that goes back to that that will be informed by your business model. That will be informed by what you're seeking to accomplish and how you how you want to go about doing it. So this is really an expandable list, but I think starting with these five CPA, legal, real estate, lending, and insurance, it's a really great starting point to understand that unlike my uh my buddy who I'll call out a little bit here, Darren, but um, you know, it's not just jump on Zillow and it's not just find your dream vacation rental. Let's go ahead and jump into the the business aspect of it and make an informed decision so that by the time you're jumping into Zillow uh, to start inquiring into your properties, you have that that knowledge base necessary to know what you're looking for and to be able to move quickly on the right property for you. You know, this has been a great episode. I think professional services just not talked about enough. Again, doesn't have to be a big expense, but it is an expense. Got to be in your performa. But with the right professional services that have a great deal of expertise in real estate, you're going to be well set up for the future. Yep. Well, TC, we've done it again. We've taken up 30 minutes of our, our listeners' time, so hopefully provided great value. That's always our goal. Uh, If you're listening to this and you love it, please like, please subscribe to the podcast. If you haven't, if you know someone who is looking to get into this amazing business game, uh, please recommend the podcast and and always uh, reach out and love to hear your comments and and anything you want us to talk about or, or any pressing questions you have, always reach out and uh, we can, we can add it to our podcast list. We, we've we got no shortage of material and uh, we're excited to, to just keep recording and sharing as much as we can, but also want to make sure that we have an outlet that if we need to sail this ship in a certain direction to help build that competence and confidence for our listeners, uh, that we're, we're mindful and executing on that as well. So another great episode, TC. Thanks for the time. Thanks everyone for listening. And we look forward to uh, doing this again soon. Thanks, everyone.